guys, welcome back to my channel, Master of EDM. In today's episode, this will be the first in YouTube and internet history to have an Auron DJA screen replacement tutorial video. We all love our Auron gauge, right? Especially Trackies, a device so cool it measures all the crucial inputs from your machine for the best performance and off, you know, on and off the track. But this sweet little gadget has its weaknesses. One of it is the sunlight, at least for me. So whenever the sunrise or sunshine too bright directly on the OLED screen, it will get burned like this. So unfortunately, mine got burned. So whenever it gets too hot in the device, as in the AC is off, it gets direct heat from the sunlight. Even just a little bit, it gets blurred out and shows the burnout screen. So when that happens, nothing can be seen and sometimes a full blast of AC can even bring it back to life. But most of the time, it just won't budge. So that sucks. As promised, now I'm going to replace the screen by first taking out this carbon fiber trim of the dashboard. First, you need a prying tool and start by prying from the door end. Make your way to the AC vent and you know pry everything off the dashboard. Alright, once that's done, you will see there are three connectors connecting to the aircon vent. First, take out the temperature gauge connector one next would be the Auron main connector take that out next would be the central locking and hazard light connector that's you know you need to wiggle it through behind and there will be all the harnesses connected to the trim all right for next we move on to removing the aircon vent housing from the trim you can see here there are three slotted clips on each of the vents. Just use a prying tool and push back with it so that it will pop out and uh, you can do it one at a time for each vent. So once that popped out, you can just slip it, lift it out and detach it from the trim. Okay, now that we have the unit out on its own, it's easy to work on. Take a look at the side of the vent. You'll see this round thing, which is a bracket that's holding the screen. So the screen sits in the housing, which has two brackets slotted into the main vent housing. All we need to do now is to push this and pull out the screen and it will pop out. When the screen is out, you will see cables connected to the main motherboard. Now we can unplug this cable socket by pressing on the both sides of the connected. Voila, the screen is fully detached from the housing. So what you're seeing here is the back plate of the motherboard. So there are four screws at the back and two more at each side, two on the left and two on the right. So all of these are T9 screws. So unscrew all of these. Okay, once you got out all four screws, gently remove the back plate now you'll see the motherboard exposed, but it's still mounted at the side by four screws. So now unscrew that and you'll be able to detach the motherboard together with the screen. Moving on to the next step, look closely at the screen connector. There is a 61 pin serial connector socket. Unlock the thin black hinge to release the screen from the serial connector. Once that is done, remove and isolate the screen from the motherboard. And when that is done, detach the OLED screen from the glass panel. This should be easy with a thin and flat prying tool. Alright folks, now once that is done, put aside the glass and we can open the new replacement part. So take that out, check out everything is according to spec, make sure it is the right part number and place the spoiled OLED screen on a flat surface next to the new replacement part. It should look different in color. There seems to be discoloration for the defective part compared to the new replacement part which is black and the faulty part is look like a goldish color so that means it's spoiled it has been um, 
you know, spoiled by the sunlight and since it's an organic LED, hence uh, the discoloration, I think. So here you can see the new screen fully connected to the serial connector. Just do everything in reverse. And make sure all the pins are aligned. Same goes to this one. Make sure everything is fastened back in a reverse manner. Don't miss out any screws. Check everything before you put on the back plate. Make sure everything's tightened. Um, only hand tight. Uh, there's no torque requirement because this is plastic. Um, yep. So make sure everything is aligned. As you can see, all the pins are aligned. And there are no debris or anything. So that's it. Put on the back plate and reconnect the main connector to the motherboard make sure there's a click sound and yeah that's it put it back everything together make sure um the bracket the socket is in there's two um, on the left and the right side so make sure everything clicks and you are good to go take a final look check everything is in place as you can see here everything is uh, pretty much you know got in where it's supposed to be um, yeah I'm trying to find the other hole but I think it's all good make sure everything is aligned everything looks appropriate proportionate yep we are good to go all right now go back to the car and remove the trim and all we need to do now is to fix back the um, vent unit to the trim so it hooks down at the bottom and six clip at the top so just line everything up and make sure it clicks and fits in all the right socket So we have uh, successfully connected the vent to the trim. Now you can see here reconnecting all the connectors, the three connectors earlier on that we detached. Um, the first was um, the central locking and hazard. So this is the temperature gauge control. And of course the last but not least would be the green main connector from the Auron. FEM module um, to the motherboard so you know connect that and done so realign everything in place um, inside the dashboard make sure it's not um, overlapping or anything fix everything up nicely make sure there's a click sound and make sure everything is firm and that's it guys we are good to go Okay guys, so here we go, moment of truth. Boom, there we go. Freshly new screen installed for the Auron DGA gauge. Everything looks crisp. It looks vivid. It's what an OLED should be. The operating temperature is 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. I should have no problem whenever it's hot. Um, all the readings, all the data, all the inputs, all the language protocol, whatever you call it, the CAN bus, anything, everything is reading fine. I'm loving it. Look at that. Marvelous. 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 There you go, guys. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. I hope it has been helpful for everyone. And, yep, it's the first and one and only. Auron DGA replacement video in the internet as of now. Thank you, like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Ciao.